Hi all, a very good morning. I hope you're having a pleasant day. I welcome you to the session where we discuss the future of bank branches, digital transformation and beyond. The banking sector, as we know, is transforming leaps and bounds in order to provide a sophisticated customer experience. Thanks to all the technological advancements, banks today are able to cater to their audiences seamlessly and they're able to provide all of their services even in remote areas. Now, this has actually created a rise in demand from the customers for a tailored approach. Uh, the customer experience or the digital transformations or implementations that were available a couple of years ago have now all changed. Of course, all we can do is agree because it has only gotten better with technology. Today, bank also has the power to be fully functional at a region without even being physically present there. We are all hearing concepts like metaverse that is booming in the banking space and there's a lot of interest by banks to be there. Now with digital accelerating banking transformation, what does the future of bank branches look like? Where exactly is banking industry headed? How will banks meet the demands of tech savvy customers? Let's discuss over the session. I once again welcome you all to the future of bank branches. Without any further ado, let's start with our first session. To begin with, we have a keynote session by SP from Intel. Welcome SP. Dr. SP is currently the Senior Director of Partners and Alliances in HEC Intel Internet of Things Group. Prior to the current role, he was the General Manager of Banking Vertical in RBHE IOTG. He has worked in Intel for about 24 years in various locations like China, Taiwan, US, Malaysia. He is equipped with various Intel product experience, including Intel microcontrollers, Intel network processors, and Intel I, with multiple papers and IP published internationally. He holds electrical and electronics degree, MBA and DBA. Once again, I welcome you, SP. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Vidya and Dave AI for inviting me for this uh, interesting event and uh, interesting topic as well for the future of bank branches how the digital transformation and beyond that in the coming years for the future of the bank transformation. So uh, we like, without further ado, of course, definitely that I'd like to uh, make sure that uh, we have all the notice and disclaimer that we will be actually captured here. You know, this is a prior, all the legal uh, statements on products, uh, information that we're going to share later in my presentations will be well um, contain and also have a disclaimer on it. Okay, first of all, I'd like to go through that, you know, we just, a lot of countries just came out a little bit, not long ago from the COVID-19 impact, especially this pandemic. So over the past two years, this pandemic had influenced customers' preference about how and where they conduct their banking and has forced banks to adopt new ways of operating. Without a doubt, the pandemic has accelerated digitizations in the industry. Many banks are seeking new technology solutions to help them to address the issue and concern uh, of COVID because of the COVID pandemic has uh, raised. One clear trend that we have seen is the raise of the mobile banking, digital wallet and the digital banking and all of which enable the customers to be able to transact anytime at their convenience without having to go through the bank branches. And this development has been a driving factor in the shift from traditional bank branches to digital or sometimes we call it a micro branches. Along the same line, now more than ever, I would say, customers are prioritizing a safe environment with minimal human interaction when they conduct a self-service transaction, such as cash withdrawals or the check deposit. Banks are investing in the contactless ATM, some VTM, and kills with the checkbox and the voice gesture recognition to provide the assurance of the customer seat. Separately, with many employees working remotely, banks are focused on enabling and ensuring the secure transaction between the customers and the employees. Many are turning to the solution, such as the video banking as well. So finally, when all the COVID become stepped into the endemic situation, as more banks are reopened, they are working 
to comply with the health guidelines and also the social distancing and to instill confidence in the customers that they can return to the bank branches to perform their services safely. Chaos equipped with the temperature reading and the video analytics can aid this effort as well. All these examples demonstrated that COVID-19 is driving significant technological transformation in the bank industry. Through new technology adoption, I believe that banks are meeting the challenges of the pandemic, strengthening the customer engagement, streamlining costs, positioning themselves for success today, and in the future as well, by repositioning their bank branches at with the recovery, fully recovery is predicted to happen two to three years down the road. So with that, I would like to share a little bit more about what is this transformation history, uh, you know, in the past 20 years and above. You know, transformation is nothing new for financial services. BFSI industry is typically the first to innovate and lead in this technology transition throughout the history that you can see over here. And you can think if it as a canary in the coal mine for enterprise. We see things in BFSI before we see them in other vertical industry. Banks have to act to evolve and think of getting better security policy planning, improve customers' experience through more personalization, offer new services with digital transformation, combining combination of cloud, edge, AI, and IoT. I like to quote always uh, you know, the word that to link all this together. When you think of the cloud is the engine, the edge is the gateway, and the data is a field, IoT is a source, then AI is the output of it. And you can see over here in year 2000, the majority of the bank customers you know, visited the physical branch address their banking needs. They really just were not other option in that 22 or 23 years ago. However, the time change after 10 years, you can see that in year 2010 plus minus, I would say online digital option for managing accounts through the various devices have kind of emerged and many customers prefer them. We will call this point is the evaluation of banking 2.0. 10 years later, which is not long ago, before the pandemic happened in year 2000 and 2020, customers were engaging with their banks primarily through the digital option. AI had evolved at this point where it could help between to provide the customers with a more personalization experience. So we call it a banking 3.0. With this pandemic impact, the past two years, we're moving into 2020 and beyond and looking into the future. The variety of the way to engage also expanded. Now, including AI power, checkbox and the services. We call this ecosystem banking 4.0 or network 4.0. Through digital technology advances, banks can provide their customer with more personalized experience and a greater number of services offered while reducing the human staffing needs. Fewer staff means less space or less footprint in the bank, uh, bank branches physically is required allowing banks to reduce their investment in the real property without compromising the level and the variety of services they can deliver to their customers. So I would say that AI now is fueling the new capabilities in the online and also branch at the edge as well. AI technology can improve the bank's ability to achieve four key customer outcomes. I would say higher profits, at scale personalization, distinct omni-channel experience and a rapid innovation cycle which will be going to outline in this uh, future's ecosystem banking 4.0. So let's look at how we could actually transform catching this trend and we can come into the well uh, could say that you know all this come together to transform into the market trend we call it a digital of the micro branch. So Prior, before I step into discuss about the detail of the micro branch, let's look at some of the report from the McKinsey. In the practical terms, given all the forces that we are all in play, 
how can we optimize a branch and potentially increase the profit by two to eight percent as quoted by the BCG study forecast. You know, understanding exactly what customer want is a good starting point. According to this McKinsey report that you can report out, customers are saying that they want digital option for routine transaction, but prefer the human touch for more complex issue or question. This awareness offers an opportunity to look beyond the traditional model of service delivery in branches and instead focus on integrated customer engagement through a combined digital and physical bank branches. Sometimes we call it physical. Referring back to this BCG study just now, you know, increase the numbers of 30% of the sales while reducing the full-time employee 40%. Or reducing 65% of the cost per branch, emphasize the opportunity that a way of repurpose bank branches and operating model enabled by technology is really, really critical. As the majority of the transaction and back, back office or front office tasks are automated, staffing or operation costs also decline. So at the same time, with advanced AI analytics, identifying sales opportunity revenue and profit margin definitely will increase as well. So this will bring us again to the concept of the micro branch we will discuss in the following uh, form. So you ask me, what is this uh, micro branch uh, definition looks like? You know, in the traditional bank branches, 70% of the floor space is divided to tellers or reserved for that or other assisted sales and servicing area with only 30% used for the sales services. However, micro branch is, is kind of flip this ratio and have a significantly smaller, simpler, but more streamlined footprint. A micro branching strategy can effectively address many of the challenges that we have just now discussed by optimizing the bank branches and optimizing with the new technology solution to depend less on the human staff, but a bank can improve the customer experience while reducing both operating and fixed costs with the digitization. And you can see on the right, the three main factors that driving interest in a micro branch. First, speed to the market. Many banks would like the ability to quickly increase the branch density into all the market area. Because micro branches are small, scalable, using the standard footprint, they can be deployed quickly and effectively. Second, risk minimization. While where the real estate is kind of expensive, I would say in most of the city or country, building a traditional branch is perceived as greater risk, especially with the long compliance checking on the physical security implementation and protection. Third, cost reduction. In addition to the lower land and construction costs, a micro branch offers the potential for reduced operational costs. With, however, the customer's service experience will continue to be increased with this digitization. For all these reasons, banks are increasingly turning into micro branch. Micro branch have minimal staff on site. Instead, they rely on the edge cloud technology to deliver an outstanding omnichannel experience with the intelligent platforms such as AI checkbox and AI tools, contactless technology or frictionless, and digital face of voice recognition. Through the video banking, they can support customers anytime of day or night, increasing efficiency and customer satisfaction while reducing the operating costs. Operational tasks are handled primarily by the digital solution while we free up all the staff to assist a customer with higher level value advisory services. Thus, so micro branch is becoming a key component of the customer engagement strategy moving forward, helping to orchestrate customer experience across all their product, services, and the communication preference. Let's see how the, you know, the journey that actually inside this micro branch. There are three key element components here. First is to attract, the customer can perform their request at any time with their same profile using on their internet mobile banking. 
second transact the transact the services will be personalized to the preference of the customer throughout all these edge iot devices whether it's atm machine kiosk machine or vtm machine last but not least very important for the bank is to retain their customer keep the customer happy with their trust to the service the bank provided with a detailed record digitally and securely at their fingertips so ATR is really kind of key element services experience they can offer with the micro branch technology. So you ask us that how that we can actually help you to quickly step into micro branch uh, building or micro branch strategy. So last but not least, I would like to kind of emphasize that we are here we Intel to provide the building blocks and a platform for you, for the customers to build the micro branch from the cloud to the edge with the necessary uh, security components and connectivity. Uh, you know, and a few key elements that I would like to call out here is like, first, besides enhancing the performance of the platform to help the IT to manage with the lower TCO cost, the platform also offer a long life support so that you don't need to worry about what if I implement the product uh, in the next two years, will that obsolete in the following year? And there's no, we, because we offer five to 10 years of the product life support with of course enhanced user experience and the security component as well. So I definitely that looking forward that to work with you and to explore how we could help you to build your micro branch based on Intel components over here. So without uh, further ado, I would like to thank you my partners again, Dave AI, which have been with us during this transformation journey to provide the end-to-end -end solution. For the detail, please enjoy uh, the subsequent sharing from Dave AI in this event, or you can also refer to the previous podcast or webcast that we have conducted with the Dave AI and also with the end user banks as well as Mr. Here. For more detail, how you could utilize Intel component to help you to build the end-to-end -end or micro branch solution, you can visit our URI over here, the future of the banking in the www.intel.com. If you have any doubt or any questions that uh, all the details that you require, we are also here to provide you all our sales support from all over the world, whether it's the US, here APAC, ESMO, email or china that we have the people that you can contact our sales team or you our marketing team over here to help you if you have any doubt or any questions thank you again for your time and appreciate uh, your invitation thanks sb for those wonderful insights it's always a pleasure to have you as one of our speakers thanks once again Now, we have Dr. Anand from Dave AI to present to you his views on the future of bank branches. Let's all welcome him. Dr. Anand, co-founder and CTO of Dave AI, has more than 16 years of work experience in the field of machine learning and AI. He has a PhD from KT at Stockholm on speech communication systems, MSc from ISC on signal processing. He has over 30 papers published in various reputed conferences and journals and three patents to his name. Once again, welcome Anand. Thanks, Vidya. Uh, hi, everyone. I'll break my uh, talk into four parts. Uh, I'll be. I want to briefly touch upon these four aspects, which are going to be key to the future of banking. Uh, the first one is uh, regarding uh, AI and how AI would have an effect in future of banking. Uh, this has been something that we have been discussing for quite a while now within our company and with our partners. And uh, more and more of the uh, the first touch uh, information uh, that happens, that is in the sense that uh, signing up with the form, solving the the day-to-day the -day problems that the customers face, answering queries about uh, things that the customers may uh, we have problems with or have questions about. These are some things that are going to be increasingly taken care of by, uh, by AI. Uh, this can happen at the bank or it can happen over the web. And there are different ways in which uh, we can uh, we can achieve this. Uh, so especially if it's on the bank, then you know it's something like a small ATM or a small kiosk can actually serve the needs of a person which is uh, to the level of what you would do normally in a bank. 
because you don't need so many tellers you don't need so many uh, you know people to uh, put put in the papers because you can sort of fill in the forms you can uh, do an identification uh, of the person you can do an authentication of the person you can do a lot of things uh, related to security and identification on uh, with the help of uh, kiosk or a computer and that will reduce the number of uh, the uh, human touch points uh, as we go on however humans human touch points will now get uh, will move into more and more of uh, analysis of uh, the data that's available and creating custom products for specific segments of uh, of uh, you know of customers to make it extremely customized and extremely uh, Uh, you know targeted towards specific customer to the need of a specific customer this will uh, this will require a tremendous amounts of data analysis and would require uh, a lot of insight from tech which will allow these kind of new products to come come forth and uh, coming up with these products coming up with new innovations in these products is what i think more and more of the personnel in banking would be uh, working on uh, the uh, the third thing that uh, you know which is uh, Uh, which would be uh, an important aspect of the uh, of the, the future of banking uh, is going to be uh, uh, tokenization and uh, and uh, ledgerization. So while uh, a lot of a lot of talk has been happening about uh, Bitcoin and the, uh, the other cryptocurrencies, I think more than currencies, I think the, the ability to uh, to assign ownership or assign uh, a specific uh, purchase uh, to, to you know to ledgerize a specific purchase or a specific transaction with the help of uh, uh, blockchain is going to be very crucial uh, while cryptocurrencies uh, are still uh, there is still no clarity from many governments about uh, trading and making uh, uh, and making uh, investments in cryptocurrency while that while uh, that possibility really strongly exists uh, ledgerizing and uh, uh, moving to a, a, a non a unified uh, sorry a unified ledger across uh, several uh, users uh, in such a way that there is uh, much less chances of uh, of hacking and uh, you know and uh, theft uh, etc is i think would be one of the key features of the future which will talk about security and finally uh, there is a, going to be a lot of uh, interaction with, with related to uh, uh, related to uh, to vr uh, metaverses as well as uh, remote interactions so a lot lot of people uh, a lot of times actually the uh, the one of the biggest challenges of not having physical banks in the future would be about meeting people and talking to them about products that your bank offers tele tele calling has has a very low uh, you know uh, retention rate as well as uh, you know has a very low conversion rate so uh, a lot of times what happens is that uh, there are a very large number of calls that have to be made which is very often disturbing to the to the users to the to the customers but are also not necessarily effective Very, very, it's very low conversion rates. It's one, one to six percent. It is often uh, utilized. Uh, of course, there are robo calls, and that reduces the costs uh, uh, tremendously. But it, they are not effective ways of uh, selling new products or explaining new products to the customers. It's a very difficult thing that happens. And getting, creating a relationship with the customers, and then selling and creating a trust between a certain person and the customer, and then making and creating a loyalty from it. These are some of the things that are missed out in the modern. we are banking because of the remote uh, usage of everything so but more and more of these relationships are going to be built over uh, you know in the metaverse where people will be communicating with each other uh, working with each other engaging with each other in many ways uh, so movement of banking towards in the metaverse and uh, having uh, representatives of the bank uh, talk to customers and explain their products in their in the metaverse is going to be more and more likely and this is the this gives a, a better chance for people to you know interact with uh, with the uh, with the people build a trust build, build a relationship with their uh, with the, with the banking managers with their uh, with the personnel who are working for the banks and thus uh, find products which are very suitable to them or uh, make a very informed choice about what they want to purchase uh, or what kind of products they want to work with 
the panel. So I think these are the four main uh, broad topics that uh, are going to be uh, the future of uh, banking. And these are all related to uh, development of new technologies or enhancements of existing technology, which would shape the way banking uh, is going to take place in the future. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Anand. Next up, we have a fireside chat session that will be moderated by Puneet Sharma. Puneet, why don't you take it ahead and also introduce a speaker? Thank you, Vidya. So we have with us Piyush, who's a senior banker. Uh, you have 13 years of experience in a public sector bank in India. You worked in um, metropolitan cities, in semi-urban and even rural India. And now you're all the way working in international markets, all the way in Africa. Uh, good to have you on the fireside chat. Welcome, Piyush. Hi, Puneet. Thank you for having me. And uh, uh, I hope I'll be able to answer or share some knowledge that I've gained over a period of 12 years, 13 years with you guys. Great. So let's dive straight into it, right? What everybody wants to know. Uh, from your experience, what is the future of bank branches? Where are bank branches headed? Okay, uh, let me start this, uh, let me take this question. I'll start from, uh, you know, defining my, or explaining my experiences. I have to uh, divide branches into few categories, especially in India, because in India is such a diverse country, we cannot, uh, we cannot talk about just one set of, or one set of customers. So in my experiences, I have worked in semi-urban rural, I have worked in urban, I have worked in metro uh, uh, branches. All branches will give you uh, a different experiences because of the different set of customers. So uh, mm, uh, uh, as you said, how, uh, what is the future of the branches? Future of the branches completely depend on the geography of the branches. Uh, so, for example, uh, the way we are, our digital, uh, you know, banking is uh, is spearheading, and it is going to uh, impact largely all types of branches with a different uh, uh, level of impact. Uh, so, for example, let me give you an example. Uh, we have, I mean, bank banks in India have around 50% of their branches in and approximately 50% of their branches in rural India. So I think uh, even with all sort of digital transformation, uh, branches are going to play a very, very important role in, in rural India, especially in implementing government sponsored scheme and financial inclusion, which will uh, be very important in semi-urban and urban areas also. Branches are going to be play a crucial role in metro, but they will be uh, they will change their role primarily from business originating unit to uh, customer experience hubs, and uh, businesses will predominantly be originated through other means like uh, digital means, uh, websites. Third party enablers, vendors. But uh, even in that situation, branches are going to play uh, a crucial role in terms of giving uh, user experiences, giving uh, uh, brand to the bank, helping banks grow it, their brands, giving user experiences to the customer, onboarding customers for their on their digital platforms, onboarding customers uh, for. Uh, host of third party products that banks are doing. So I think uh, if I have to summarize, sum up, all uh, branches will have an impact going forward because of the digital changes that we are seeing in the banking, but the level of impact will differ uh, for a basis demography, basis geography. So for example, just let me go to you an example. We have around 15,000 branches uh, in rural, uh, RRBs in rural, uh, regional rural banks. So uh, I have not seen much of impact uh, of digital transformation in rural banks. Uh, they they, they they are uh, serving a major portion of rural India, but haven't seen a major big breakthrough in uh, digital uh, products or digital banking in those banks. A 
that's very interesting so because usually when we talk about digital transformation we are in the metropolitan cities talking about retail customers and we limit ourselves to that however you are bringing in a very different perspective so why do you think uh, digital hasn't let's say broken through in these tier 2 or rural areas no i'm not saying they haven't i mean digital hasn't reached uh, rural or uh, semi urban it has but the onboarding is slow you have to uh, you know uh, you have to uh, uh, bring that sort of uh, th- uh, you know skill set to uh, uh, you know give these products to your customers for example in a village if you have to give a mobile banking to a customer so it will bring a different level of interaction you will need a different le- level of uh, uh, you know skill set to convince those customers to use these products and not just onboarding because onboarding is just first uh, or the, or just just a part of the process the actual uh, or the end result has to be uh, the execution and user should be able to use it as much uh as a, a urban or a metro customer is using which is not happening so for example if you have enrolled somebody in a mobile bank in a rural uh, area so how is he going to use it how many times is he going to use it whether it's just for the sake of enrollment that we've enrolled or is he actually using it so these things are very important for 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 successful implementation of digital products So which is which is slow onboarding is slow it is happening it will take some time i mean more time than what we take we usually take in uh, in metros and urban areas but it will happen and uh, just to give you uh, an example india more than 500 million uh, people are staying in in rural india uh, and just around 100 100 150 to 170 million people in metros so you can see that uh, approximately three times Uh, of uh, of our population vis a vis metro are staying in rural so there is a huge potential for banks as well as for digital uh, products for fintech companies uh, over a period of time to tap into these customers so do you think it's only a matter of uh, taking what we are doing in the metros to the rural areas or banks have to think differently in two strategies I think uh, uh, it's a very good question I mean, of course uh, I'm sorry I've interrupted you no, no, please but uh, this is I also wanted to bring it bring this point in your last question that uh, we whatever products that uh, we we making uh, banks are introducing in my opinion and it's a personal opinion are, uh, are made keeping metro and uh, urban customers in mind and uh, this is where we might have uh, uh, we might need we may need to uh, you know customize products for uh, a rural or village uh, bank banking or banks and to ensure that they are also able to understand these products they are also able to use it and uh, they are also able to get benefit from uh, these products another important point that we miss we i want to bring it here although we've not missed it so far is uh the confidence that uh, these people these customers have to show into these on these products so it's going to be a challenge for bankers in villages to uh, ensure that people are confident about using these products so because there is a high level of skepticism about uh, there could be a level of skepticism about digital products because you know they are they are low income uh, uh, population and it's very very important for them uh, to ensure that their money is safe and which they feel is safe in the banks which they may probably not feel uh, likewise or same way with the digital products so how we go how the bankers in the villages and village branches are going to convince these customers to use this product is going to be a uh, challenge in my opinion great now coming back to something you said before a bank in the future will become an experience center you said so what do you envision when you say what am i going to do in a bank because i can do everything on my mobile phone 
I used to go for a KYC. I can do that also on the mobile phone. So what will I go really? Let's say two decades from now, what will I do in a bank? So two decades, I think it's uh, it's uh, quite a. I mean, it's, it's a, such a uh, uh, you know far, far, far. Yeah, I will not be able to you know give you a perspective on two decades. But in uh, uh, say, I'll just quote an example. Say for example, if we talk about lending. So even in the digital space, so far we have touched upon a, a very small portfolio of uh, lending products. Uh, for example, we are doing personal loans. We will probably be initiating car loans uh, on the digital platform, but we are not able to close uh, uh, the loans, or we are not able to give an end-to-end solution to a car loan. We are not able to uh, give an end-to-end solution to mortgage-based. products for example if you want to take a housing loan you have so many other uh, third party vendors involved in in a loan so you have you may you will need a lawyer to give you a legal report you will need a valuer to value your property you will need a due diligence agency to go and search uh, uh, verify your addresses you verify your salary slips verify your income tax returns you will have to inspect the property so there are so many uh, 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 bottlenecks to make uh, a mortgage based lending product uh, completely digitized so in coming time i think with uh, with uh, with tech and with uh, blend of uh, various solutions if we are able to uh, resolve uh, or if we are able to bring all us uh, all the vendors all third party people who are involved in the process of lending together on one platform and uh, if we are able to give a completely digitized uh, experience in other products also uh, it is going to be an exceptionally uh, uh, important step in banking which so far hasn't happened i'm not sure if any uh, any other banks or any other fintech company is working on it or have already done that but in my knowledge it hasn't happened i don't think it is going to happen next couple of years but if it is happening it has happened or it will happen it's going to be an amazing uh, uh, change because you know in even let let me tell you one thing in in a housing loan the government is also involved so you have to create a mortgage you have to do a registry at the registrar's office so there's so many uh, uh, people who are involved in this. so going forward i think uh, most of the banks will uh, will you know look into simplifying other products other than personal loan and car loans and make them completely digitized and this may happen in next 4 to 5 years interesting what other elements you think of physical banking or in person banking that banks need to bring it to digital and what digital elements uh, because in other industries now we are talking about an omni channel you know physical and digital which works coherently do you think banks are heading the same way and what they need to uh, copy from physical to digital and digital to physical let's say see banks they they if you see if you talk if you see banks how they used to work 10 years uh, i mean 10 years ago and now it's they have already changed uh, a lot uh, so uh, the number of people flocking in the branches have reduced most of the people who were doing their mundane jobs are not coming to the branches so there there very few people who are coming for uh, cash deposits so the transactions uh, cash tran- related transactions in my opinions have in my opinion have uh, come down uh, the uh, rtgs and any fts uh, that we the people used to do from banks i have largely moved to internet banking and mobile banking Uh, but having said that mobile banking is not a new technology uh, banks started like a decade ago but the adopt- adoption has been slow it has catch up only in last 5 to 6 years it hasn't uh, uh, it, it, it hasn't even started in some of the banks so for example as i quoted you in the rural banks it hasn't i don't think any rural bank uh, has uh, or uh, majority of the rural banks they do not have this facility uh, so uh in rural i mean in in uh, uh, metros and uh, most of the big cities uh, most of the bank branches have already become a uh, user experience uh, hubs for most of the uh, 
uh, clients. However, still uh, there is a good number of people who completely depend on branches because of the lack of understanding of digital product, which eventually will happen. Uh, for example, let me take you an example of my own father because he is like very qualified man, but he's still afraid of using digital products because a because he's not comfortable. B he is he has no need to use uh, uh, those products, uh, so he's just completely dependent on cash. So th there are few. Uh, there is a big uh, segment of people who have no need to use uh, uh, digital products. So how are we going to onboard those people on digital platform is going to be a different uh, challenge because they really do not have any need to use these products. A. Now let's come back to the branches uh, experience. So branches will, in my opinion, will cater to those people who are not comfortable with uh, digital products, uh, helping them onboard, helping them do their uh, self banking initially. Uh, uh, they're going to be a uh, one touch point for all those third party queries because banks are doing uh, insurances, mutual funds also. So they're going to play a major role in resolving those uh, uh, issues. They're going to play a major role in NRI customers because they are still relevant for them. Uh, when Because NRI is around the world, when they come back to India, they have a relationship manager there. They may not be using Indian uh, digital products so they will of course need a branch to go to and uh, uh, branches are going to play a very crucial role in terms of uh, uh, you know enhancing brand experience for the banks so they are going to represent banks uh, they are going to showcase their products to the customers so largely they it's going to be a digital first experience for most of the clients back very well backed by the uh, branches in near to short term time. Long term, I am not sure because there are most, a lot of people talking about how branches are going to be uh, unviable uh, eventually. I don't think uh, this, I don't see this is happening in, in near future. It may happen in some of the metro, as uh, it may happen in Bangalore and Mumbai, but it won't happen in, uh, in uh, at least in my village, it won't happen, it won't happen in, in a remote corner in uh, Nagaland, it won't happen. That. So they're going to play a very, very important role, complemented by digital product. In some uh, places, digital will be first. In some places, branches are going to be first. It's funny, you know, because we always talking, when we talk about digital, we are usually talking about catching up, you know, catching up with the digital. Do you think there'll come a time when we'll actually leverage the digital? For example, for a public sector bank, it makes a lot of sense to be present in various parts of this huge country, right? Where probably you can not always find employees. You think we can leverage, we can have manless branches uh, yeah. in areas that were inaccessible before? Absolutely. See, let me uh, let me tell you, the cost of operating or running a branch is uh, huge. Uh, you have fixed cost, you have staff cost, you have, uh, and the operational cost is also uh, very high to run a branch. Plus you have risk of running a branch because you have fire risk, you have to take insurances, you have to keep your documents, loan documents in branches, which, which is also a risk. So there are so many risks uh, attached to a branch along with the operational cost, along with the uh, employee cost. You're using so many uh, very good resources run in running a branch which could effectively be used for doing other things. So of course this will eventually happen and I think most of the banks are doing uh, are working on 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 these things how to reduce staff first from the branches and then eventually move to as you said uh, uh, humanless branches but as in as i said i mean in a country like india which is so vast and diverse uh, which has so many uh, you know uh, uh, segments in in terms of population also in terms of clients it will the own body it will take some time uh, for this to happen but it will happen eventually and it is good for banks also because it's digital is initially it's it's costly but eventually uh, uh, it's it's very cost effective and uh, and it's more efficient also but I think it will take some time uh, before we'll see a completely humanless branches around the country 
Nice. Let, I mean, changing the topic a little bit because we always talk about user experience and the bank's business side of things. How are employees or bankers perceiving digital transformation? Are they scared? Are they going to lose their jobs? Or how's the perception inside the industry? See, from I'm not I'm not sure of, of all the banks, uh, but uh, the organization where I work in. Uh, we are taking it uh, very positively because, uh, of course, initially it's, it's it's stressful because you have to uh, any change is stressful. Uh, so you have to we have to change uh, customer behavior. We have to change. Uh, we have to onboard them. There's so many queries that the customers have, and then when they use it every now and then, they will have uh, questions. They will have issues which are to be resolved by the branches only. And they're effectively doing it. Uh, uh, and so it's, yes, of course, initially it's stressful for the staff because A, they have to acclimatize to the changing uh, uh, consumer behavior, changing banking patterns also. They, are, they, they themselves are learning, and uh, but they're doing, and it's a lot of hard work for them. Uh, but in uh, coming times, uh, once most of our clients in branches, See, branch is a micro unit, so you will have, uh, once you have onboarded a lot, lot of, uh, one branch is completely different from another branch. So you will have, see, digital penetration in one branch uh, can be up to 90%. Whereas uh, a branch which is like 30 kilometers from that branch may have a digital adoption of only 30%. So the question is, uh, how are staff feeling in a branch which has a digital ad adoption of 90% vis-a-vis uh, uh, a branch which is only 30 to 35 kilometers away but has adoption of only 30 percent or 35 percent so in my opinion uh in coming times it's going to be very very uh, uh you know relaxing uh, for branch staff also uh, if they are onboarding uh, most of their clients on digital platform because uh, uh, maj majority of clients are using uh, are coming to the branches for mundane jobs for cash deposit for RTGS, which can be efficiently cost effectively done uh, from a di digital uh, uh, platform like mobile banking internet banking so st initially stressful uh, going forward it is going to be uh, convenient for branch staff also that's good to hear so coming back to it like uh... In your opinion, if there, there was something which was make or break, if someone, let's say someone listening to this chat uh, is planning their digital strategy, uh, keeping the branch in mind, what is the couple of things that in your opinion they must keep in their mind? Are you uh, talking about the bank or? Uh... Yeah, banks looking, you know, digital trans looking to transform themselves digitally, a person involved in digital transformation working for a bank. Yeah. What is it that he must keep in mind from a bank branch perspective, which he might not have since not everyone has managed, you know, as many branches as you have in different geographies. What is one thing they should keep in mind while making their strategy, let's say? So just to uh, understand, is it for the branch, from the branch perspective or from the bank's perspective? From the bank's perspective, the bank's digital trans, uh, strategy perspective. So you, usually all the strategies are uh, made at the central level. So exactly. Adopt make a uh, uh, framework for digital uh, digital uh, products and the implementation will be done by the branches different branches will have a different uh, challenge based on the location as i said and the geography metro br branches will have a different set of challenges uh, branches in delhi bangalore mumbai will have a different set of challenges branches in uh, remote uh, places will have a different set of challenges in my opinion, every uh, branch will have to devise its own strategy. Uh, I, I cannot say that a bank will change its product based on a branch, which is not possible. So it's the staff uh, or, the, or the people who are on the, on the field who are going to uh, make the difference. So uh, at best, we, what we can do is uh, make uh, different strategies at the regional level. For example, in Northeast, there could be a different set of strategies for a couple of states. Uh, for Haryana and uh, Himachal could be a different set of strategies. But uh, more or less the products are going to be same. It's uh, it's the people who are going to implement will have to enhance their skill sets. 
that's what i feel i i think because this is what this has been a challenge because uh, 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 what we see in delhi is uh, uh, the a, a client in delhi or consumer in delhi is uh, way more easy uh, to onboard as compared to maybe someone uh, in the in, in rural part or in in, in a tier 2 or tier 3 city so uh, uh, largely it's going to be a uh, uh micro level strategies uh, different micro level strategies then uh, the bank level strategies which we need to change well thank you so much piyush i'll let you conclude if you if you have something to say you know something that the listeners could take insight from to conclude i think uh, i'm very very bullish on indian uh, banking sector uh, a there is a lot of buzz about uh, fintech startups uh, and uh, you know nbfcs but i think the digital revolution in my opinion and a personal opinion will be led by traditional banks only because of the customer base they have because of the reach they have and because of the uh, the trust that they have uh, from the clients so it's going to be uh, the revolution will be there it's coming it's already there it's going to be very very big in coming times primarily led by uh, uh, traditional big banks and small banks uh, very well complemented by uh, fintech companies of course fintech companies have shown the way but uh, it will be taken to the next level by the traditional banks on that note thank you so much for chatting with us peesh right it's wonderful yeah. wonderful pony thank you so much for having me and i hope i have covered i've i've not covered i've shared my experience from uh, what from the places from different places where i've worked and i hope i have uh, uh, you know given a perspective from those places which are usually not talked about you have been and i'm sure the listeners would find some insights which in this time could be in that thank you thank so you much again. pleasure have a good day thanks a lot piyush and puneet so that brings us to the end of the session i thank you all for being a part of this i hope you found this interesting so next year soon we will have we'll come up with another topic that might excite you even more thanks a lot for being such wonderful audience thank you